Welcome to our space where talking about the inspiring things with inspiring people is what inspires us. Waiting for you here are the infinite possibilities that creation, collaboration and connection have to offer. A universe where we see everything through roasting the spectacles that help us to keep our faith in the power of imagination alive and well. And now, let's talk. Armando Alemdar Ara, an artist and co-founder of Neomodernism, an artistic movement that places important, particular importance in the aesthetic and spiritual quality of paintings, is here with us today. Is our guest in Medralla Rosa. From a Sufi background, he presents to the world paintings, images, where an inner world in constant movement is always present. Also, there are some sort of uh, parallel dimensions, always in juxtaposition. And if I have to say, when I'm in front of his paintings, personally, I feel dragged into a, an ecosystem where feminine and masculine, yin and yang, find balance, but also fight for balance. Thank you so much for being here with us, Armando. Uh, as you can see, I'm quite nervous, but it's basically because I really appreciate um, you being here and also the quality of your work. So this is going to be important for us. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Carl. <laughs> I was um, checking the manifest of uh, neo-modernism and one of the things that called my attention is that one of the um, uh, sentences said the soul in the eye is quite important for this movement. Uh, work, the neo-modernist work of art concentrate the soul in the eye. How would you explain that? Well, I would say um, that that signifies what um, I believe art is uh, about, what art is. Um, it, it is that, that uh, meaning that a work of art brings um, and inspires in each of us, uh, whether or not we you know, necessarily understand um, art. Um, it is something that I think every human being recognizes. Um, I am tentative to call it beauty uh, because uh, his art historically that it's such a loaded word but um, for the sake of argument let's call it beauty. Um, is it for you beauty then a uh, spiritual quality present in things or is it is it rational? Is it emotional how did you appreciate how did you define beauty it is i think the marriage of the rational with the irrational uh, with, with the intuitive and um, it beauty is truth if we follow for example i i'm um, i've always been inspired by uh, philosophy mm -hmm. um, and um, a lot of my work uh, evolves around that um, around those con philosophical concepts. And um, in Platonism, um, beauty is truth. So in that sense, the more authentic or the more real something is, the more beautiful it can be appreciated. It's, it's, there is something like that, truth and authenticity are related for you or, or for the kind of philosophy you follow? Yes, I think that's a good uh, word for it, authenticity. Um, the truth um, of a so-called ugly portrait, it's still a beautiful portrait. But not every ugly portrait have that authenticity, so it's really very subjective. Well, I would argue in, in, uh, in neo-modernism mm -hmm. um, that uh, beauty and truth can be objective. Okay, 
Okay, um, and now I'm interested <laughs> in knowing how do you found, how do you create a movement? Because we, we learn from books, uh, history in general, but especially from artistic movements, and we never really had the opportunity to have a conversation with someone that is actually a founder of a movement and here I am talking with you. I need to ask you, how do you do that? How do you create an artistic movement? Well, the, the answer, Carla, is in your question, uh, conversation. <laughs> uh, I have had conversations um, with like-minded uh, artist colleagues, art historians, um, art critics, um, and we just happen to be all, you know, at, at the right place at the right time. Um, I co-founded the movement with um, an artist colleague of mine at the time, uh, Andre Durand. He's Canadian, isn't he? Yes, Canadian-born. Um, Does he live in London as well? No, he's uh, he was, but okay. now he's based in Italy. Okay. And uh, several other uh, artist colleagues. Um, and we were all equally frustrated with the art world uh, at the time. Um, Are so we talking about what year? 2000, 2000. at the turn of the millennium. Yeah, it was a, a meaningful date. <laughs> Do you still uh, feel r related as much as you did at that time with the manifesto? Surprisingly, yes. I didn't think I would. Uh, but every time I revisit what we wrote, um, it still rings true. And um, I still, um, alongside my colleagues, um, recognize um, what we wrote in the work we do now. And it is, you know, now 20 years. So um, it's, it's quite incredible. Um, I'm, I'm very proud of it. Do you edit sometimes some of the statements or, or it no, has been it like that since the beginning, the manifesto? I mean. Absolutely, nothing, nothing, nothing has, has changed. changed. Nothing has changed. And if you have to explain, let's say for everyone, for me, what mainly means to be a neo-modernist, what it would be? Well. It is not so much an, an art movement, it's just an outlook, a philosophical outlook on, on art and life. So, um, and it is nothing um, special in terms of academic learning uh, about art. Um, it is simply recognizing that um, this truth uh, in art and in life um, can be acknowledged without any um, distractions. And uh, what I mean by that is um, when we look at a masterpiece uh, in a museum or gallery, uh, we are distracted by our knowledge or what mm. we think mm -hmm. is knowledge. Um, whilst we are looking at that artwork, we are distracted by someone's opinion on it, on it we're distracted by what someone maybe wrote about it, uh, by the art movement it belongs to, by the ism. Um, by our own background, visual by, background. Also, yes, yeah. by our experience. So the argument of neo-modernism is that we can look at that artwork without any... Of those uh, distractions. Any distractions. Look at it, really look at it intimately for what it is. And, and then we can have a real communication with it. And that's but it, it. it is um, interesting because coming from someone um, which is an artist that apart from a practice, pra uh, your work, you also have been in a, you went to the university and you have an academic background in art history. The history of art. So, how how did you really um, f find that battle inside of you? How do you really really relate to something, trying to be as pure as possible in the way you look at, the, at it, without letting all this knowledge you have interfere, to interfere? 
Well, um, the ancient philosopher Plotinus uh, once said, um, you ask me how to know the infinite. I answer not by reason. So um, this, this is the outlook I have um, in that the, the more knowledge we have, the more we have to, in a way, forget that knowledge. Mm -hmm. And is it easier or more difficult the more you know or the more you relate to knowledge? It can be more difficult. It can become a distraction. Um, as Picasso once said, uh, the, the aim of an artist is to return to their childlike uh, yeah, to state. The primitive, the, the to, naive. To become, yeah, to become a child again. Um, so th that, that is exactly that, forgetting, uh, purposely forgetting. Oh, you know. That, yeah. Is it easy? I wanted to ask you, but further up in the interview, but I wanted to ask you, being a, someone cultivated in the history of art, when you have to confront your own practice, does that make you too self-conscious? It can do. Um, I don't know if... Um, is it, it a is... struggle? I don't know. I can't answer that because I sometimes feel I've been blessed in that I can notice my thoughts and um, I have this ability to let them go. Mm. And um, I don't know whether that makes it easy uh, in itself or whether I just find it easy. But um, in your personal experience, it hasn't been an interference. No, no. No, but um, when I get into a flow of painting, I, you know, I, sometimes I can even see myself uh, painting. I, in a way, like I come out of myself. Yeah, and so possessed it, it's, it just, <laughs> by a spirit. Things are happening. You know, yeah. my hands are moving. And, but it, that is not to say that um, um, I, I don't have conscious thoughts. I do, and there is knowledge there that helps me. Uh, to make decisions about which colors I choose or, you know, how to change the shapes and so on, how to create depth, how to, you know, arrange the composition. These are all formal qualities in art that um, I think uh, we cannot or we shouldn't uh, avoid. Yeah. Um, and which, which, again, links to the theories of modernism, which... Um, a little bit critical of what has gone on in the art world um, in in the postmodern era, where these formal elements have been more or less ignored for the sake of um, conceptual. Yes, uh, just Somehow. just <clears throat> yeah, a, a reaction, uh, the the search for a, a reaction, a provocation yeah. rather than um, for beauty in itself. Okay, okay, it's like seems like mm, these days trying to achieve something beautiful is almost dirty, a dirty intention when nothing could be more beautiful than exactly. chase beauty. Yes, exactly. And just to use the word beautiful. Exactly, is, is, exactly. Uh... As much as we can <laughs> or want. And I'm curious uh, about your um, background, family background, or your life back in Macedonia, please tell me everything. Are you from a city? Are you from a rural uh, environment? What, how, when was the first time you thought you could paint? Or you wanted to paint? I've painted since, I don't know, since I was able to hold something in my hands. Um, I, uh, I'm definitely a city boy. Okay, <laughs> from a urban, urban <laughs> and, um, reality. Um, I grew up in an artistic family. I thought um, so. And uh, with, with great intellectual and visual stimulus throughout my childhood. And my father was a theatre actor. Uh, my, fa my mother was a costume designer for the theatre. And uh, the family's closest friends all worked in the theater, were writers and poets and artists and musicians. Um, my The closest family friend was uh, um, the director of the National Theater in, in Macedonia, 
and he's the one who framed the first drawing I ever created at really? age, age three. Um, I still have that drawing, I think, I hope. <laughs> Somewhere. Uh, yeah. Um, and uh, at the back of it, he wrote that uh, one day when I become an artist, I shall uh, remember that drawing. Um, okay, so considering that you have always been a painter, when was the first time you had conscious of uh, the art as career? and that you could actually find satisfaction in it? Well, at, at, at my, uh, in my education, um, I, I never uh, gave any special thoughts to, to my abilities in art. I, I never you know, thought about it. I just drew and painted and um, the, the noise and the excitement around me uh, is what made, you... uh, made me realize, I guess, um, th that, that I will be uh, in that world. Mm. Um, and, um, it, you know, where, when, I, when I was growing up in what was then uh, Yugoslavia, it was a socialist uh, structure of, of life and uh, the um, the only art awards that I would win in art various art competitions would be some kind of books that uh, <laughs> would promote the socialist yeah, ideals exactly. <laughs> but um, uh, so I, I never gave any serious consideration of, of an artist as, an, as a career uh, however um, family circumstances and also the uh, political unrest at the time uh, led me away from from Macedonia and I we ended up in the UK and um, I just took it for granted that I would be an artist I, there was nothing else I could think about okay um, at some point in my career as an artist I I, I stopped uh, for for a few months and I I just felt it was time to reflect and I realized that I made the decision to um, start to study on uh, theory of art and art history uh, because I had always read anyway uh, on philosophy and philosophy of art. It just felt like a natural uh, step to, to make. I've always believed that um, to be a good artist, you need to know the theory of art. and to be a good art critic or art historian, you know, you need to know the practice of art. Yeah, it's like um, both are so related. But I also, do you think to be a good art critic, you need to know the practice, really? I don't, I'm I not sure so. about that. Do you think so? I think so. Why? Um, you just have an intimate understanding of the processes. And um, I, I know how good art critics have been and are uh, and and you know probably without knowing the the art practice yeah. but um, i think it it helps can make you don't you think I, I personally think that it can make you too condescendent with the others because you know the struggle <laughs> so maybe maybe i don't know if you but but i know i also think that to be an artist yourself and knowing about art is amazing because as human being gives you a three-dimensionality that is important, but it can also make complicated your, this, your, your path and your work because of that weight of history. All you know, all you know it has been done, all you know that has been there. So to feel like whatever you are contributed with has an importance sometimes it's difficult when you know too much yes it can be it can be for sure and that's as i said earlier that that's when as an artist you have to learn to forget otherwise it's overbearing do you know i went to turkey many years ago and i had the privilege of uh, having uh, the opportunity to see a sufi a whirling dervish yeah and when I 
make this relation between your Sufi back background and that thing I saw, and then I see your paintings in the middle with those colors and those movements somehow makes me feel like I kind of understand, but is it that feeling of movement that is so present in the way you, you, you treat color and shapes in your paintings related somehow with this sort of meditation in movement? That... Yes, I think um, I probably have some kind of gene memory about it, <laughs> but um, uh, the, the movement is, is definitely um, my main focus. And the abstract shapes of the movement itself uh, uh, are, are placed with the same importance as the physical forms uh, in my art. And, mm -hmm. and this is how I uh, created my style. Uh, I initially was uh, creating more or less representational art. I would uh, sketch ballet dancers and, and so on uh, whilst they are um, uh, practicing and uh, just naturally I, I started to uh, sketch the the lines of their movement and um, as soon as I gave them equal importance as their actual bodies um, I was able to create this this style that I've developed so um, the, but at the same time I know through uh, readings and the background. My, my grandfather was a, a, a dervish uh, who would, uh, oh, you know, what an amazing world. And so, and I know all about that. It is all about the movement of the planets and how they move around. Uh, it's the, so sophisticated the, the knowledge behind and and the, the, the it's so beautiful and also as a spectator so immersive and like a very intense form of meditation, not only as dancer, but also as when you are um, witnessing what, what happens there. Yes, it is a, 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 the, the performance go into a, a trance. Yes, um, yes, yes. And it is like a meditation and it is purifying because um, the dance symbolizes the movement of the cosmos, of, of our solar yeah. system. Um, and it is uh, much more sophisticated than one would think. Yes, um, yes, it, definitely. It, yeah. So you don't, it's not, you, have you draw dancers of this Sufi dance? Um, no. No, not, not, no. Not, not, not necessarily. No, no, I, no I just... No. Somehow um, it's there for me. Yes. For me, maybe it's just a... It probably is. I, I, I'm not conscious of it, okay. but it probably okay. is. Um, I, um, as I say, dance has been a great visual inspiration, uh, parallel to my inspiration from readings. Um, I, I rarely get inspired um, for, for, to create my style. I, I don't think I've been uh, directly inspired by Paintings. By paintings. Okay. That's interesting. Uh, I was going to ask you, um, because sometimes when you talk with writers, they can tell you w which books live in the books they create, because those books have been so inspiring, or they, mm. they are the inspiration, so somehow they live through the new creation. Mm. I, paintings that lives in your paintings just because they were very important for you at some point of your career? Yes, I am. Um, indirectly, I've been inspired by many artists and for sculptors example? and uh, I still am. Um, but uh, for example, the color scheme that I use is inspired by Titian, the Renaissance artist. The yeah. sense of movement from the physical body, um, I'm inspired by the French sculptor Rodin. Yeah, of course. Um, the, the, I don't know, to show a form that expresses, that has pure expression rather than just the symbol of expression, I'm inspired by Egon Schiele, but not by Klimt, yeah. who was his teacher. So, you know, it, it's, yeah, it, it, the inspiration is there all the time. And there's so, there's so much great art. 
<laughs> out there. Why, why uh, shield yes and clean no so much? It's just, uh, if, if I would compare them, I would, um, um, I would think of Klimt as pretty mm. and Schiele as beauty. pure expression. As beautiful. as beautiful. As we were talking yeah. before, yes. It, it, there's some raw, raw, rawness raw, yeah. uh, um, attribute mm. that it feels beautiful. It feels really beautiful in Schiele, yes. And um, the nude for your movement, neo-modernism, what's the importance? Yes, well, the th that is primarily because uh, the, the human figure in the Renaissance and in ancient Greece was the measure of all things. And uh, there was a geometrical balance, uh, for example, in the way Greek sculpture was created for the sake of the ideal of beauty. Mm. And, um, you know, that was the, 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 the inspiration behind that, um, that postulate of, of the um, Minimum Manifesto. There's somehow a way to relate with the human essence in a more um, respectful way or more close way because the humans that are represented in your paintings are nude and they 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 are they are somehow not wearing any symbol of status or any mask or any any trend anything that makes you to relate the human with a particular social environment exactly yes or particular period of uh, human history so uh, when it is a nude, it is timeless. It's timeless, yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, in 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 another. Do you work actually with uh, models in your practice, general day a day, day to day? I have, I um, I have, and um, but lately I I've just I I work mainly with dancers. Um, it's just I need I need the the the, the movement. The movement. Um, but this uh, notion of the human figure, the nude, mm -hmm. uh, also, I think, it, it symbolizes um, our existence um, and, and our relationship to, to life, because... How much we are nature, how much nature we are. Well, in the sense of, um, um, for me, uh, uh, of, of how, for example, the philosophy of German idealism um, viewed, like, for example, uh, Immanuel Kant um, had his theories about how we perceive uh, the world. Because if, you know, would the world exist um, if we are not here to perceive it? Um, so uh, the nude symbolizes that ability to perceive. The world. It symbolizes our humanity. Okay. Without too many con social constructions. Yes, without social construct, without uh, distractions. I'm interested in your practice in your studio. So, so you sometimes how do how do you work when when you have the idea of a painting? It comes to you as an idea in language, in whatever language it comes, it com or it comes to you as images, or do you develop the paintings just by observing your models? How does that work? Mm, that's an excellent question. <laughs> <laughs> I, it, it, it usually comes as an idea, but as soon as I think of the idea, the images come to my mind and then I have to then find the, the, the figure, the figurative pose to develop that idea. Um, I think this is the, the greatest challenge of an abstract artist. Uh, to um, do you consider yourself an abstract artist? Because I would say you're a figurative artist. 
Yes, uh, that is interesting that I yeah. said that. Um, I do consider you myself do consider as an abstract artist. Because your effort is in trying to tell the story without without compromise too much to to anything in particular, without making a jail in any way. Well, the, the I think, you know, I guess in this, the tradition of modernist art, I, I would see the, the, the progression to abstraction as a natural, you know, process uh, from something that was recognizable. Um, I really do not believe in abstract art that, that is not born out of that kind of a yeah, process yeah. Uh, that, that, you know, is like uh, splashes of blue and red and so on. Um, if it if it's not born out of a process like that, um, then I I can't recognize it as something yes, truthful. You, it's as a viewer, it happened to me. It's so difficult to relate with a splash of color if it doesn't tell me somehow in some way a story I could I can't relate to. Mm. But sometimes I feel it's a, it's a limitation as viewer. But. Who knows? <laughs> Who knows? I'm just sometimes trying to be honest. And yes, some colors, uh, some abstract artists can really, really move you, can really, really make you feel excited and feel like, I love this. But some others, you don't feel anything. Absolutely. And you have an artist like Mark Rothko. Yeah, I was going to say, who, I love who what does he does. That. He um, did. But even, 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 uh, his art that, that is completely abstract and, yes. and is not necessarily um, born out of a process. Actually, it, it is. Um, is it? There is a process in his abstraction. Um, so even, even if that process is um, um, the labor of creating the layers of colors that yes. result in the end, to you know, to what it is, um, and 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 you know, there's an incredible depth and an infinite uh, sense of you know possibilities uh, in his art. Uh, and there's a sense of beauty in so present. Absolutely, it's yeah. It's, 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 yeah, it's something infinite and mystical and beautiful and You're, true. And yes, yes, probably because we all feel somehow moved moved by this yeah. art so it cannot be casual it cannot be just a circumstance or or just because he's famous and well known talking about that how do you relate with um, having a successful career and you have many galleries that represent you which is a struggle for many artists to find just one uh, and and you find you have found a style when you found a style, is that good? It, th does that make you less free, or or th does that feel like you are making some compromises? Yes, that's another excellent question. <laughs> I, I, uh, Sorry. I have I have um, uh, struggled uh, with with that question. I've asked myself that question a couple of years ago. Um, uh, whether having found a style can be a hindrance to the continuous development yeah. as an artist. And uh, it, it resulted in me changing uh, something uh, and uh, in, in ways that I have returned slightly more, I've taken like for what I see as a step back towards the figurative and, um, and tentatively trying to find a new balance between the figurative and the abstract um, in these past couple of years. And it's been a wonderful journey, um, but it has taken a certain amount of courage. But the ultimate sacrifice, the ultimate courage, which I don't yet have, uh, would be to, uh, to come back in a way uh, to how I was drawing and painting in my youth. Mm. Um, I've always felt that that was like the purest form of expression. It was very expressionistic. Um, 
And why not? Why not to come back? I, it I, would be too far from where you are now. Yes, and, and I don't have the courage. And um, I hope I will. I, I, ha I worked in one of the galleries. Oh, I'm very we're, we're curious. I would like to... Tell me more. Tell me yes, more. well, in, in, <laughs> in one of the galleries that represent me, the, the curator there once uh, came to me uh, whilst I was like we were hanging at an exhibition and he said, do you know what I want to do? I want to ambush you in your studio and take away all your drawings and unfinished paintings before you finish them. Uh, because they and show... And do an exhibition with that. And, and, yeah. and, and, and exhibit them, yes. And, um, and, and so th this is, this is So do you struggle. recognize that there's a place you could go and you have been tempted to go, but you don't feel strong enough to do it? I mean, not strong, but uh, you don't feel confident enough and don't know what to, what word I, to I use. I think it's, it, 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 I think it's good that I have those thoughts and mm. I think it's good that I recognize it. Um, it's beautiful. It makes you, it, it's very humble um, from you because every time you ask something like this to an artist, they never ready to say, I don't have the courage to go to a place I have already envisioned, but, but I don't know if I have the courage to go there. They always somehow, we all do it, justify our decisions, but ne you would never say that it's lack of courage. You know what yes, I mean? Yes. And that's amazing. Well, uh, my exhibitions were sellouts until 2008. And then when the financial crisis came, there was an exhibition where I had one painting that was in that style that I want to gather the courage to, to do. All the other paintings were in my current style. And that was the only painting that sold that year. That really, that means a lot. <laughs> well, I love to see meaning in everything. So please do it. Yeah. I am definitely curious. Is it more figurative? Is it more ex expressionist it, it, in, a, in a German way? Yes, I would say so. <laughs> yes, it, it's, it's more expressionist in a German way. Absolutely. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. It, it just, it's something that comes completely natural to me. And there is so much art that is uh, that has these beautiful expressionistic qualities and i i can see i can understand it uh, and i i it comes so easy to me that perhaps it is too easy for me to respect it and therefore i feel this yeah, need yeah, to, to to labor yeah, to learn, um, challenge yourself uh, <laughs> a little bit more. Yes, yes. But you know, you know, American says that whatever is easier, is better. <laughs> 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 and you should charge more for that because yes. it comes easier. And it would take not less the, time. Not the opposite, <laughs> but you come from a Marxist uh, uh, frame of mind. And I understand mm. that. I can't relate to that. But um, also... Uh, Tell me about your experience with children, teaching, teaching art. Um, is it that as commonplace as we imagine it would be like you are all the time learning from new genius, new generations, uh, new energy. It, that drains you or that gives you a lot? Um, I think at times it's both. Um, but the benefits are, are great uh, because when you teach you are thinking aloud and you uh, it's a constant reminder for your own practice mm -hmm. and also at times I am inspired by by my art students and um, it, it is a wonderful thing to do I think it's a noble thing and also a useful thing and um, you know everybody is a winner in that situation because when the the art teacher is a, is a practicing artist um, they make for better teachers and the students are more inspired and um, of course it, it comes back it, it, their energy and creativity inspires the teacher 
Yeah, definitely. But well, that's more or less what most of teach teachers say. But I guess also sometimes it's not as good because it's time you are taking away from your own practice. But that is a selfish, probably, desire, no? To spend more time with doing your, your own thing. Mm -hmm. and, and also somehow takes you away from solitude and puts you in contact with the real world, which I think for an artist is a good thing in general. I think so. <laughs> I think so. It, it, helps, uh, it helps one uh, discipline uh, oneself. And um, uh, with the time constraints, as well as you know, appreciating the time you have, because you have less. You make of it. the most you, of it. You have yeah. to make the most of it, and you you do become more disciplined um, about it. Um, I I really I struggle with this idea of of uh, the artist as this uh, mad genius who you know can wake up in the middle of the night and just. Uh, you know, it's not, it's not able to, to resist the urge of inspiration and, and, and so on. I, I'm not sure, I'm not convinced uh, from art history uh, how true uh, this that, is. That I, is. I yeah. suspect that it is a, a myth created okay. Okay. by a... Why? Well, French we... uh, art agent <laughs> in the 19th century. Some existentialist <laughs> writer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that sounds very, very French. From Arto, that that idea of the of the terrible infant, terrible infant, yes, young well, and mad and not yes, not and and without a ear, you know, Van Gogh was highly educated, uh, highly intelligent, highly insightful, uh, both about uh, life and art. He had incredible knowledge of art. He wasn't uh, like a, you know. Uh, yes, okay, he had a mental illness, but he was very disciplined about his creations. Are you disciplined? Are you, do you consider yourself someone who, uh, you know, um, put some order <laughs> in your life or follow, follow structure? No, I think I'm quite uh, disorderly, but I am disciplined. I'm disciplined with my thoughts. Okay. Yes. M sounds more like a commitment with yourself more than a structural system that you have created in order to function. It's more like a commitment. I, I can't get away from the passion I have, so I, I will do it. Yes, yeah, and, okay. and, and the, yes, but you have to be disciplined, otherwise there will be too many distractions um, from you know, daily life. So. You mentioned that after the crisis in 2008, the market changed a little bit and I saw a presentation you did in 2012 of an exhibition called Goddesses and the Mystical Women to celebrate the 10 years with GX Gallery. And you said in that presentation, you probably don't remember, <laughs> that uh, for first time in years, uh, for first time in your career, there was in one of those paintings a straight line. Uh, how is the relationship now with straight lines you have? Yes, I still struggle yes. with straight lines. <laughs> yes. Why? <laughs> they, um, they help. When, sorry, sorry, when uh, you do as a model classes for, for ateliers, yes. all the teachers say, all the tutors, that there's no better way to get the curve than working with straight lines. Yes, that, I mean, but they they sounds used for... philosophically sounds beautiful, sounds yes. amazing, but I don't know how. how but they use for measurement, uh, for measuring mm -hmm, with your eye mm -hmm. and your like thumb. little straight yes. lines give you the best curve. Yes, yes, I understand that, uh, but as as a, as a final outcome, I don't know. It's just something, I don't know if it's psychological or it, for me a straight line means um, restriction, the, the the impossibility of conflict. And, and therefore, if there's no conflict, there can be no resolution. Mm. So, uh, and, and how can there then, then be some kind of some kind of a flow? And, and uh, how do you solve the 
you know, at least in my style. I mean, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I just can't, I can't uh, <laughs> make peace with straight lines. <laughs> and now that you said that, you gave me, you are giving me the perfect opportunity to bring when when we introduce when I introduced this interview, I said something I really believe, and I don't think I read it anywhere. That is somehow in when I see your paintings, I can feel drag into a, a, a kind of um, system or ecosystem that works with the feminine and the and the and the masculine at the same time, like like fighting, but finding something also is it true is it, is it do you think that's there or absolutely that's the the i, I can't even say it's uh, most of the time it's all the time that's what it and is in a very it's... holistic way like in a way that is not uh, watching at things in a as, as separated but as uni united yes um i i would like Uh, for um, the viewer to consider that either as as two aspects of the feminine and the masculine coming yeah, together, yeah, and call it as yes, or just ourselves and those two aspects within ourselves yeah. finding some kind of a resolution and balance. Um, so um, I I'd like to leave that ambiguous in a way in 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 my abstraction so that you know it could be seen as that okay and yeah. how about collaborations how um, are you comfortable are you f excited when it comes to collaborate with other artists even from other disciplines or are you more Uh, someone that prefers to do his work on his own. Um, well, I. I, I saw. I, I mean, saw I, recently I, in your Instagram a painting you did, half of the painting in collaboration with another painter. Ah uh, yes, well that that was in For fact. For example. Yes, that's uh, like a kind of an experiment that we did uh, with Andre Durand and. Um, it, I think it worked well. Oh, it um, was with the founder, yes. uh, and were you in the same place and city, same... Yes, we, we run a fine art consultancy. Uh, we were based in Kensington, and um, uh, we uh, created exhibitions and events, uh, cultural events, uh, music uh, concerts and philosophical talks and uh, so on, yeah. It, but yeah, it was, it was wonderful, wonderful yes. to collaborate. It was very exciting and a new experience. Uh, but yes, of course, you feel very related, uh, very connected with him. You have created this movement together. But when it comes, for example, to do a musician does something with your paintings or uh, yes. are you very jealous or very no, protective? No, I think... I think everything needs to um, be channeled towards representing the idea and how that is done you know if it's with a collaboration great if it's not great um, so i have collaborated with musicians um, i i have these ideas that i would like to develop further um, it is ideas uh, from the bauhaus the, the bauhaus art school and specifically uh, with the artist Kandinsky okay. and, and the musician Skriabin, who in fact created a machine that uh, played, uh, that, that um, presented colors uh, which equated to each musical note. Um, and I, I find these kind of things fascinating um, and um, inspirational. Okay. Um, about your palette of colors, which is so you, is so characteristical, is so such a style. You have such a style in the use of color, not ju not just because of the whole layers, but also the quality of the color. Um, I don't know. I also feel it's related with some sort of optimistic. Well, it's um, th there is like quite a lot of technical um, uh, uh, ideas there. Um, 
I, I, I use a Renaissance method of painting with transparent glazes. So, which means the final um, co colors, the final painting, uh, the colors achieved on the painting are achieved by several transparent layers of uh, glaze. Uh, so I don't necessarily mix the color on okay. the palette and okay. then apply it to the canvas. Okay. Um, so that way I cannot fully know What's happening? What 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 color I'm going to end up with? Um, but the the technical aspects, there are some rules uh, again that I follow from someone like Kandinsky's uh, theories, um, whereby uh, and and Goethe as mm -hmm. well, um, and whereby, for example, cold colors create uh, the illusion of more distance and warm colors create uh, of, of uh, closeness. closeness so when you combine these kind of colors uh, it creates a sense of depth so even if the painting is abstract and is seemingly uh, flat uh, it still has a sense of depth and for me that's quite an important quality to have in an artwork uh, because it, it really pulls the viewer in um, so yeah, I think it's it's uh, for me art is a tool to 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 um, something spiritual. Uh, I I I I don't believe in this modernist concept that art is a, an artifact uh, that is flat and is there to hang on a white gallery wall and be enjoyed in people's homes for what it is an artifact. I think it should be a like a a window. To another dimension, to another world, to a dream, to a hope, um, to a feeling. Yeah, talking about the spiritual quality present in art and in the artist, um, do you? I remember also when we visit you in the hotel when they, they do that exhibition that is each room has an artist and then all the paintings and and or, or artworks are there. Somehow you, as a viewer, can see the paintings in a space, in a dialogue with a space. We, we were talking a lot about mythology and some myths that you have explored with your drawings, with your paintings, and uh, it, it, all the myths, uh, Greek, Greek mythology, I feel it's very spiritual some, in many ways because they, you relate to archetypes and you relate to universal emotions and universal struggles, feelings, whatever. And uh, so, so maybe that interest of you in um, archetypes and myths it's, it's, has something to do with that uh, need of bring bringing to the artwork some spiritual dimension absolutely i i um greek myths are so relevant still today um and they're always an inspiration mm -hmm. and um you know um greek mythology um in in my view uh, forms the basis of monotheism. Mm -hmm. uh, Hermes is the archetype of Jesus. Um, so you know it's it's uh, it's all. Is it? I like yes. Hermes. Her I, I yeah, think so. the the messenger. Yes, the messenger. But he's so he's also vicious, a little bit vicious. Mer Mercury for Romans. It's also you know the power of war. It's also related with the commerce and the the word the word word not world that say the truth and say a lie. You know you can use it for a good thing or for a bad thing. And in these archetypes, both both are together, mm. which I adore. I love Mercurio. Mm. <laughs> But so Jesus, <laughs> I like this Jesus. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and and which means have you used? I think you told me something about uh, Icaro. I I don't know in English. Yes, Icarus. Icarus. Um, Icarus. Yes, Icarus uh, has been a fascination for me for many years. Actually, I've revisited um, 
this myth many times. Oh, I have I've, good memory then. I've painted many, many times. Many times, Icarus. Yeah. Um, I I don't know. For me, it's like um, it, it is per a particularly beautiful myth because it symbolizes so much of what it means to be human, mm -hmm. um, even in our failure uh, to fly. Um, and I've 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 always been fascinated with that notion of um, the 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 desire the urge to fly uh, to to um, to be a better version of ourselves, uh, which is how I, I see it, uh, how I see this urge, um, and uh, even when we fail, that is not necessarily a fall. Um, uh, it it can also be seen as something noble and beautiful because we've tried. And it always brings transformation somehow. You try whatever you are, you achieve. You in in the meantime you transform yourself. Yes, yes. And and I guess in that transformation, there is some aspect of vicious. <laughs> viciousness in it. <laughs> Vicious, you know? that, that's the beauty of <laughs> Greek myths, that it's not about good and bad, it's about conflict and it, it's about duality and, and yes. it, it's always there, the fight of two forces to yes. find something in the middle or not, <laughs> or not, or to fall. <laughs> yes. And uh, are you comfortable talking about your coronavirus? Because he uh, don't know. Sure. Are yeah, you I mean, okay? <laughs> um, how was that? Uh, that that has changed you in psychologically in any way? How was the experience? Please, I think I haven't had the opportunity the, to talk with anyone that had the coronavirus. Yes, it was very hard. I, it is uh, really, I think. Uh, a, a strange, mysterious illness because it affects some people mildly, and yet you know it, it kills others. Yeah. So uh, with me, it was very hard. It, it really, um, I was very unwell, um, and for several weeks. And um, at at one point, I I almost gave up. Really. Uh, like the will to to uh, keep going because of the problems with the uh, breathing um, but um, oh really I I, um, I can't I don't know if it has changed me I I, I, I can't say I haven't had these kind of thoughts I at other times when I've uh, been well uh, I like to remind myself always not to take anything for granted uh, when you know when uh, we are well we're healthy yeah. and and you know uh, don't have any concerns about life. So I, I, for me, it's always been useful to remind myself that um, uh, th these are all causes to be joyful and appreciative and humble about life. And uh, so this episode of my, my illness um, was another reminder, another opportunity for me to remind myself that, you know, uh, uh, when and if I get better, um, I will appreciate every little thing that life offers. <laughs> and um, so you really were um, so bad, feeling so ill. Yes, I think at one point it was bad. If if um, I didn't have you know my partner next to me, I I think it would have been very difficult to <laughs> get out of it. Wow. Yeah. Well, because don't know when when you see a person that is young still you feel like okay maybe that that's very bad for people with particular conditions health conditions or in a group of age that makes them more susceptible but no I don't know it, it, it feels really scary. Yes, I guess because you know I I don't fit in any of those categories. And, and how so. <laughs> how did how was the um, protocol? How were you dealing from a medical point of view? Were you just waiting for it to pass, or 
Were you taking, were you in the hospital? Were you at home? How was it? Yes, just at home. I, um, I tried to get to a hospital. The ambulance uh, arrived, but um, it, it, it was judged that I, I'm not yet uh, at the stage for a hospital. Um, so uh, it was all at home. I, uh, I, I, I'm hesitant to use the word uh, fight. Uh, I don't think I, I fought it off. I think you know, you just have to go through it. And uh, um, I don't know. Maybe it's luck. Maybe it's just the way you know we react. Uh, our bodies react. And, and once is is gone, it's gone. Or do you still feel some symptoms sometimes, or some? Well, I'm I'm still not in the uh, physical condition I was before the illness, um, and there is one peculiar thing about this illness in, in that um, when when you are affected, um, there are times when you get better, and then suddenly you get worse again, um, and and that happened three times with me, and this is really tough on on uh, on your resolve uh, because you know you you build up hope that you're getting better and then all of a sudden it, it's bad again so um, and we were talking before that from a psycholo psychological point of view is particularly difficult because there's no much information out there about what is really happening to you to your body and you you that that uh, uncertainty maybe makes you feel even weaker somehow like because it's your body but also your mind which is struggling to understand yes I think so I, I think that's that's a good assessment um, and but I think that's why um, relationships you know I, uh, I was lucky to have someone uh, and, and to have a partner in life, in crime, you know, in to, everything. to be with me and um, and me to be with her. Um, and um, Because we, you both had it. Yes, yes, but uh, my partner's symptoms were mild. Uh, but I, I think it, it, it really did affect me in a way that I think even affected the new body of work that I'm, I'm doing now. Okay. The new, so that's interesting. Um, in which way? Well, the, I'm going to entitle the new exhibition Symbiosis. Um, and um, I uh, really want to show the, this, these ideas of, of uh, two entities merging together and supporting each other. Um, and. Um, yeah, I think there's a lot of that already. I mean, um, yeah. uh, there's already beautiful bodies entangled in some of your yes. recent works, which I love. And uh, this idea of, of a hug, of uh, an embrace. Mm. Yeah. So there, there's going to be even more of I that. I think we, with a little bit more intensity. Okay, okay. That's beautiful. From, yeah. uh, it's going to be an optimistic message as usual? or, or not Yes, for sure. For, for sure. sure. You're alive. Yeah. You're here. Yeah, yeah of course. And uh, I think we are getting to the end. I don't know if this question is going to be good for, for to conclude because maybe it's too long. But in your blog, uh, you have um, an essay there uh, called a dialectical, a dialectical Philosophy of Art, I think. And in the introduction, you said that some of your, most of your students, and I think it's a question that society have asked itself for very long. Uh, you have been asked if art can change society. In what, what do you think? Can art change society? Not directly. Um, I think uh, art can change society insofar it can affect us as individuals and thus affected, we can make a better society. Um, I think as, as soon as um, art takes that role of, of being the catalyst for change in society, it, it, it is a dangerous path to take because it, it becomes another social tool. And then 
it's very easy for it to become um, a propaganda, like we have with Soviet art, mm. um, or like we have with religious art. So um, I think um, art has as uh, is on a higher pedestal than that. But also when you when you relate with your own ideology in in a fanatic way, it doesn't matter if it's a state. Uh, the, the belief of a state, but your own mind functioning as a state can be propaganda as well. I mean, if you are too attached to some sort of ideas that don't move, don't change, are like totems, of, then you are kind of doing propaganda yourself, even if it's not to serve a state or, or, or an entity of power. Yes, you're talking about dogma, yeah. and um, it, it's um, of course that's uh, th this is why, um, in a way, we uh, created neo modernism because uh, it, it was meant to be an antidote to artistic dogma, um, and and you know, um, I I I think uh, I feel I feel the I feel a duty. Uh, to um, continue in that direction as an artist and, and as a thinker. And how, can, how have you changed your own world or the world of the ones you love because of the art you do? Well, I, um, um, I had a gallerist who, um, uh, in fact, at, at uh, GX Gallery, which was in uh, Camberwell in, in South London, um, who um, told me a, a, the most moving story um, in that um, there was a, um, um, a drug addict uh, who was homeless and would camp outside the gallery um, every day for several months. And um, his story was that when my paintings were on the window of the gallery, um, this man just stayed there and kept looking at them and then disappeared for a few months and uh, came back after a few months. And it, it transpired that uh, he, was, he used to be an artist and uh, that he then uh, stopped using drugs and started painting again. Uh, as a result of this experience of being next to the gallery and, and seeing my paintings. So that, that was just the most beautiful thing for me to hear. Of course. Um, and, but I think also, you know, with people that are around me and also, with, you know, my clients, I think um, there's, there's perhaps too many anecdotes to, to mention, but um, I always am told um, you know, in one way or another, how, how positively uh, my art affects them. Um, I have a client who said, oh, we, we, don't, we don't need a TV anymore when we look at, when we have your painting in the living room. That's amazing. Uh, but, you know, it's, it's, it's wonderful. But, you know, it, I, I can't um, take anything for granted. And um, as I mentioned before... Have you become a better person since you are an artist, uh, a professional artist? You have been painting always, but since ever. Um, no, I don't think so. I think I'm the same person as I was when I was a child. I, I had an urge to show something to people, or to help somehow. And uh, I think essentially that's why I'm an artist. Well, thank you so much. <laughs> this was amazing. Uh, Can I help thank you? you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, really pleasant uh, conversation. I hope yeah, you enjoy and, it. And it was really enjoyable. And um, I think your questions were really, really good. Thank you. Really good. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>